Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, an interesting puzzle. Today's puzzle is called Mosaic by Suspicious Door, a name I do not know at all. I think it's the first one, uh, a debut on the channel for Suspicious Door. And we've got a thermo and some killer cages without any numbers in them. And that's it. Well, we've got a little bit of thermo, some very short thermos that even a good lift won't good lift. Um, anyway, we'll look at that in a minute. Don't forget that on Patreon, we're halfway through the um, competition period for Kraken the Cryptic, the Kraken-based um, six Sudoku puzzles, different variants, different standards of difficulty in the puzzles, and loads and loads of correct entrants who all confess to having, to having had a good time, which is great. I mean, they're kind of forced to, but there we go. Um, it's been brilliant. No, no, people have raved about the puzzles, which is very kind. And uh, we do encourage you to give them a go if you are learning variant Sudoku or indeed if you're an old hand, give them a try because they're good fun. Join us on Patreon. $2 a month gets you the monthly rewards and quite a lot of other content that we put up in the month. Um, $3 a month gets you the solution videos as well. So, uh, that's Patreon. We've also, oh, and today, my super hard crossword. Um, the Times Monthly Club Special is up on Patreon for um, those who subscribe to that and are interested in some very difficult cryptic crossword fare. That's today. So, also, we've got all of our apps, which include Killer and Thermo apps, um, but and also gas apps for genuinely approachable Sudoku, which are great introductory devices. Do check them all out. Um, very cheap, very good value. And Sven Sudoku Pad, similar, and all of our merchandise. Sometimes a bit less cheap, sometimes takes a while to deliver, but it's so popular. Anyway, let's have a look at this puzzle. This is called Mosaic. Yeah, that's an interesting clue. First of all, normal Sudoku rules apply. So one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box. Then, digits may not repeat within a cage. Nothing about what they total. And as you can see, there are six cages given in the puzzle. Digits along a thermometer increase starting from the bulb end. And that's it. Give it a go if you fancy it. Um, I'm gonna, as soon as I start, I'm gonna give you a bit of a tip about how you should look at this. And I am going to start now, so let's get cracking. Right, we're often asked, how do you know what to look at first in a puzzle? And where, where do you get your sense of what, what parts of the puzzle are important or weaknesses within the structure? And there's no one simple answer. Well, practice, that is the simplest answer. But that's not really a practical tip. But when you look at this puzzle... One of the things you've got to think about is how am I ever going to know what any of the actual numbers are? <clears throat> because all we've got are some cages, and if you look at the cages, you'll see they're all nine cell cages. That's very deliberate. So they each contain the digits one to nine. They're effectively not so much cages as extra regions. Um, and we've got these very few thermos and my suggestion is that what you've got to think about in this puzzle is that it's going to be all about geometry. It's going to be all about finding different cells that must be the same digit and identifying them. And the only one, well, no, certainly not the only way, one very good way of doing that will be colouring the grid. And there's the title, Mosaic. And that does suggest a large cluster of small colors. So I think we've got to be looking at coloring the grid, finding cells that can only be in one place somewhere else, and take it forward from there. Then probably we will color, I imagine in this sort of puzzle, that it's quite likely that we'll color the whole grid and then use the thermos to identify the numbers. We may be able to get a whole string of colors um, running up various thermos. So if that digit is the same as that digit, for instance, then we must be on a sort of ascending ladder all the way up to there, etc. So I don't know. I mean, actually, there are so many thermos provided, there's just a little too many 
for that to be necessary. So there may be an intermediate step where we need to use the thermos to gauge the relationships between cells. Anyway, I have already spotted this cell. So where does, and I mean, it's always good to look at these cages that have one or two cells poking out of their box, because that is a clue. Because the immediate thing to ask is where does this cell that's poking out of box, out of the, that's in the cage that's largely in box three, but this cell is not in box three, where does that digit go in box three? And there is only one answer. It's not allowed in the same cage, because digits may not repeat within a cage. It's not allowed in that row by Sudoku rules, so it's going to be there. Um, and I'm now noticing that all of the corner boxes have exactly the same shaped cages in. So there may be, there probably will be, relationships we can find that apply to all... Well, I mean, this relationship applies to all four. I could say that they have to be the same, they have to be the same, they have to be the same, for exactly the same reason. Where does that go in box one, the only place is there? So where... Sh oh, I see, like, yes. Let's take my own advice, look at the other two cells poking out of one of these cages, or of one of these boxes, these two cells, where does that go in box nine? Now, bear in mind, it can't go there because that can't be yellow because they're both in the same cage. So let's make that dark blue. That's going to have to go here. Then we can look at this one. We'll call it purple, and that's going to have to go here. Uh, actually, let's make them orange for contrast. Although the trouble is, Orange could be light blue, or it could be red. Yeah, I'm... I, uh, okay, I'm going to take out that colouring. Just start with this yellow, blue and orange and see if I can develop it from here. I'm not sure if I can, actually. But actually, this pattern will apply in every one of these corner boxes, because they're all the same in this respect. They're all symmetrical. Ah. Okay, let's transfer this up to here. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this pattern at the top because I've seen something that might help there. Yeah, I think it may be a matter of choosing which corner to start in. And the reason I'm finding this interesting is because of orange in this cage. Have a look at that. And we get the added bonus of this thermo, which I was going to say it's not in the other cages, but actually that one's very similar. Not quite the same in terms of direction. Anyway, where does orange go in this cage? And the answer's lovely. By Sudoku, it can't go there. By Sudoku, also in the same box, it can't be in those. But it must be in the cage somewhere. It can't be on the same thermo because thermos increase from the bulb end. So that must be orange, and I think this must be blue. Yes, it's exactly the same. Those can't be blue by Sudoku or those, so blue is there. So this is a good place to start, although I think this thermo does the same sort of job. I'm tempted to start a set of colors here and see if... Yeah, it's... Oh no, it's... Is it going to have to be four different colours? Okay, I'm going to start off this same process down here and see how far we get. So let's call that bright green. Let's call that red. And that's going to have to be here in box seven. No, I've got that wrong. Sorry, it's this one. Let's call that red. That's going to have to be here. Let's call this purple this time. That's going to have to be there. Right. Now, purple in this cage, it's the same sort of thermometer that keeps purple off it. it has to be there. Red in this, therm in this cage has to be there. Now what I want to establish is that I've got six different colours, but I have not established that. Green or yellow could be multifarious other colours. Ah, yellow can't be purple. 
because of that thermo sharing both digits. That's interesting. Oh, look, purple. Right, I'm going to get rid of green. Because yellow... Oh, well, I might come back to that green at some point. Maybe it won't be green when I come back to it, but... Okay, I'm going to bear in mind... Oh, no, bingo, bingo, bingo. Right. I, these are now going to be five different colours, and I've just established that in my brain because I've spotted that red, red, that has to be red. Can I be sure that red is not the same as blue or orange? Yes, it appears in the same box. So from box five, we know that purple, red, blue and orange are all different. And you have to keep this in mind. If you accidentally start colouring based on an imagined difference between two colours and eliminations based on that, it can completely make you wrong in everything. Now, what I was getting excited about a moment ago wasn't that red, although now I'm much more excited about that red because I now know that all of these five are different colours because that red sees a yellow, so they can't be the same. So blue, orange, purple and red have to be different because they're all in box five. Yellow sees them all because it sees blue, orange there, red here and purple on the same thermo. So these are five different numbers that are represented by these five colours. Now, the reason I was getting excited before is I've spotted that this cage is has a purple that we can fill in because those two rule out all of those cells. That one rules out that and we can put purple in there. Um, maybe it's not that exciting, but it's nice to kind of get a connection across different boxes where we can. Now, this cage still needs a yellow, but I think there are three possibles, so not wonderful there. This one needs a red, and those are all ruled out. Red must be in one of those three. That's not... One of three is not such exciting odds. Oh, this needs an orange. That's analogous to the purple. It's symmetrical. None of those can be orange, so that is... One of these is blue. Right, what might be best to do now? And I'm not sure about this yet. Ah, oh, okay, I'm going to try something else. I think, yeah, what might be best to do now is to come up with a sixth colour that can't be any of these five and place it somewhere. And I'm thinking about this cell, because remember this pattern of orange, blue and yellow applies in every box. So that cell is the same as that one. And therefore it sees red, purple, orange, blue and yellow. So this is a new sixth color and I'm gonna make it dark, well, ordinary green. And that's different. Now that has to get into this cage this, yeah, so it's in one of those two cells. Now I'm going to green-white them because I don't know where it is in that cage. The trouble is, if I put a new digit in here that is also in here, that could be yellow. Okay, how about this one? Ah, it sees yellow, blue, red, green, orange, and it sees purple. This is a new one. So I'm going to make this grey. Yeah, it's a dark enough grey that it's not going to obscure the thermo bulbs and things. That is a six... Is it, are we up to seven digits now? Six digits. Seven. Oh yeah, where does purple go in this column now? That's great. Purple goes there. We've got two digits left in the column and we've got two new digits to create... Which, is it worth doing those or do I do a bit more work on grey or, and or purple first? I don't really know. Oh, I do know. Yes, I do know. Where does purple go in this box? And we get the beautiful benefit of this thermo ruling purple out of that cell because it's on the thermo somewhere else. 
Now by Sudoku it can't go anywhere there, and by that thermo rule it can't be there. We know purple isn't yellow from column 9, so purple in this box is in one of those two cells, and that means we can place purple in box 3. It can't be the same as orange blue. We know we've got seven different colours on the go at the moment, which is good. Purple's going to be in one of those two. I, I don't want to do too many of these part coloured cells. Like I could make all of those grey stroke white, but they're going to kind of mess up the board a bit if I'm not careful. So I'm being a little bit, I was going to say savvy, but I'm just a little bit reluctant to place that. I might have spotted something brilliant here. Now I'm going to say that that Oh, it's the wrong way round. That's so annoying. I thought that couldn't be red because it was less than purple. But unfortunately, that thermo where red and purple are on it is the other way round. Might have to start thinking about the inequalities from the thermos soon. But there's probably, on the other hand, there's probably a lot of work to do on the colours we have got. Yeah, look, blue, blue. That must be blue. Just having a quick look. I see it's interesting. Now we know that red is bigger than orange. Because this goes orange and then up to blue and then up from blue to red and something else. I don't, yeah, I'm still not sure whether we're putting that together at the end or using it now. Probably. Well, maybe not now, maybe soon. Now these two are the same. By the, by the pattern, by the power of the pattern that we discovered at the beginning. But do they have to be diff? They could both be yellow. In fact, whatever they are, ah, I was going to say whatever they are must go here in the top cage, but actually it could be yellow. Oh, that's really, really interesting and also a bit frustrating. I'm not quite seeing this yet. Um, oh, yeah, no, okay. I was going to say blue has to be in this cage, but it's already in it. It's not impossible to place in it. That's a relief. I don't like digits that are suddenly impossible to place anywhere. because that would indicate I'd gone wrong. <clears throat> and although I might have gone wrong, it's no fun for me. Um, <clears throat> need to find something else now. I'm, not, I'm struggling to do it a bit. Maybe I need to think about the relations that apply up here. So those two are the same as each other, and they see now yellow, purple, orange, blue, and red but they could be green or grey. So, oh, there's still one to do down here, and that's likely to see more colours. Indeed, this... Yeah, we were going to make this bright green. Let's just check whether bright green... Oh, I think it can be yellow. It sees red, purple, grey, blue. It could be orange. Oh, I don't like that. I'm once still sort of hesitating over whether to just shade these two colours and see what happens. <laughs> it's, it, probably nothing would happen though, and then I'd be a bit stuck. No, I need to find... Right, there's a yellow... Ah, ah, there's a yellow in one of those two cells by Sudoku. And that means there isn't a yellow in one of these two because they're in the same cage. So yellow in row four now has to be in one of those two. <coughs> oh, I've just noticed grey in row six. Oh, I should mark that yellow in I can't really mark across boxes. That'll just confuse me. I am going to mark that grey needs to be in one of these two because those two are seen by these greys. So grey is in one of those... And therefore, it's already in this cage and will definitely be in one of those two and one of those two. Now, grey is a big old dark colour, so that's taking up quite a lot of real estate. Ah, that's, 
that grey, those two cells will go in those two based on the pattern that we discovered at the beginning, which is getting really important in this. So one of those is grey. And you either have two there and one down here, which would have to be here, or two there and then grey would have to be here. So one of those two is grey. I mean, maybe I'll be able to prove something on the thermo suddenly. Yeah, OK, but grey has now extended out over a lot more of the grid than before, and maybe this is a good thing. Or maybe it's a bad thing. Now, what else have we got to put in this? We've still got to put yellow in this row. If yellow was in that cage, I just know yellow can't be there. I'm wondering if it's going to have to be here, which would be very useful, actually. If it was there, it will also have to be here. But if it's here, it will also have to be here. Ah, yellow can't be there. Right. Excellent. Yellow is there in that cage, so it can't be there in the same cage. So in this box, it must be in one of those four. And now it is in this cage, not box, so it can't be in those, including those two. It also can't be there, so yellow in row six is here. And that means yellow is here in box nine. And now we are extending yellow around the grid, and we could go back to this... No, it was this bright green, and now it can't be yellow. This is very good. This is very good. This is what I wanted. As long as I can spread bright green around somewhere. Um, bright green will be in one of those two. And therefore it's not in... Oh, well, it obviously is not in those two. Um... Trouble is, those positions in this cage are still available. Ah, I don't... That's annoying. I don't quite know what happens to bright green after that, but I do know it's a new colour, don't I? I'd better just check that bright green can... Ah, bright green could still be orange. So that, that last marking was a mistake. Ah, OK. I, I'm still very suspicious of you, Bright Green. I'm taking you out, I'm afraid. Because you're not useful, while I don't know you're different. Um. Okay, but now I am going to colour these two. With the new colours. So I'm going to make this bright blue and this bright green. And we'll see if it ends up being that as bright green. It's not a 50-50 thing because that could still be orange as well. Anyway, bright blue is in this region. So in box 5, it's going to have to be here. Because that bright blue sees those two cells by Sudoku and these by Killer. So it's there. And now it needs to get into this region, and it's going to have to go there. I do know, by the way, that bright blue and bright green are different from all the others, because I've got a full list of colours in column 9. These are the colours I'm using on my palette. You can customise your palette. I think it's by double-clicking the, the kaleidoscope icon or something. And I'm not an expert at doing it, but I did it once, and I've got a set of colours that I can see as distinctive. If there's colour blindness problems for you, I'm sorry. It's You could solve this puzzle with letters instead. Um, and some people may prefer that. But it's called Mosaic. And I feel like fa staying faithful to the original idea by mosaicing the grid. Right. Um, come on, bright blue. What else are you doing? Or maybe now we use the, the, the thermos that we've got. Because it is getting a bit interesting. We've got this run from orange to blue to red. From red to purple. But we've got a, we've got a separate run from bright blue to yellow to purple. So purple's quite high. 
It's higher than all of what? Yellow, bright blue, based on that one. It's higher than red, and red is higher than blue and higher than orange. So purple is higher than five different colours and must be at least six, which is beginning to make me wonder about whether we could afford to put purple on this bulb. Which is an interesting thought. Maybe a little bit too esoteric for the puzzle. I don't know. Oh, I'd like to do just a bit more. Ah, oh, yellow in this central box. Now can't be here. So it's, sh it's here, isn't it? That's the only place yellow can be. So that's the... the ordinary green. Sorry, yellow and green, probably not good colours to have ended up next to each other everywhere. Hopefully you can follow what I'm saying if you can't see it. Maybe I'll give the greens a little G. How about that? Just so... Uh, just Sorry, I'm doing the wrong thing there. Just so we can see them. Did that not work? I thought I'd made the letter tool on. There we go. So I'm going to give the greens a G for green. Just so you can see they're not the same as these yellows, hopefully. Uh, right. Now, the, there's only one colour left in this box and row, and that is the new bright green colour. So that goes in there instead of white. Also here, it must appear... I'm a poet, and now I know it. And up here, have a beer. And in here, because that's where those two go from the original pattern. These, now, maybe we know what these are. They see yellow, purple, orange, dark blue. Just looking at my colour palette to rule those out. Yellow, purple, orange, dark blue. They see green and grey. So these are either bright blue ordinary green or red they're not red oh bother they oh they're not bright blue from column one so they're ordinary green and they get a g as well excellent now we can put the column the box 3g in there as well one of these two is a g one of these two okay we'll finish that oh but g's gone on the um, on one thermo there, it's higher than purple, and purple was quite high. So G is getting really very high. Might have to start putting some numbers in in a moment. What have we got left up here? We've used... Sorry, I shouldn't highlight them because then I can't see the colours. Uh, we've used yellow, both greens, blue, orange and purple. Got red, grey and bright blue left and no clue about how to position those. Maybe I ought to aim at these thermos. Yeah, that might be interesting. This sees red, purple, grey, yellow and ordinary green. So it is one of the blues, orange or bright green. Now, it can't be orange, because orange is less than blue, which is on the bulb. It obviously can't be that blue. So it's bright blue or bright green. Bright blue is less than yellow, which is less than purple, which doesn't prove anything. Does it? Oh, that's annoying. I... Because I've been using effectively Snyder notation so far, I'm a bit reluctant to like colour it bright blue or bright green. Maybe I'll try and remember that that cell is using candidate notation instead. Um, oh, it's weird, isn't it? Right, I'm going to look down column one where we've got... We've got both blues, red, purple... We've definitely used ordinary green. One of these is grey, depending on how these form themselves in the columns. One of those is grey. So we've still got bright green, orange, 
and yellow to place. And that's not actually helpful. Oh, this cell is this. Now, if this was the one we were trying to color bright green earlier, I doubt that I can rule that out. Oh, but I suppose in column one, okay, it is what, whatever those colors were I just worked out. We can't use red or either of the blues or purple or dark green or indeed gray. So this is orange, yellow or bright green. Well, it's not yellow because it sees it there. So this is still orange or bright green. Ooh, row three. Oh, bright blue has to be here. Oh, that's fixed this one. That's now bright green. So this one's orange. Oh, we're away now. Come on. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so there is an orange in one of these two, which is an interesting position because there is a higher digit than those. Oh, maybe we know purple can't be here because it would put orange here. Do we know that? Can purple be less than orange? No, it... Oh, it could. Orange. Purple, orange. Then it'd go up to blue, red, bright green... I'm not sure I've quite proved yet that that can't happen. Anyway, this is the final colour in the row. That's red. Does that... I mean, this is interesting. We've got purple. Let's say bright blue was one. Yellow, two. Red, three. Uh, it doesn't work because there's another number lower than red. But then purple, then dark green. I don't know, I mean it's... But orange and blue are also less than red. Right, what numbers are higher than red? Well, purple, dark green, They're, and bright green. They're all definitely higher than red, that's three of them. What numbers are definitely lower than red? Yellow, Dark blue. I thought there was a chain, yes. Bright blue. That's three of them that are definitely lower. Red is four, five, or six. <laughs> That's not the way to do it yet. We need more info. Sorry, I thought that might crack it open. Let's let's look at this column one again. Now we've got orange. We need to put a yellow in it still. We need to fix grey and bright green. So those three are. Oh, those three are yellow, grey and bright green. Well, this one sees grey and bright green in the box, doesn't it? So that's yellow. Yeah, that's right. Um, and this is grey or bright green, but it can't be bright green because that's in the box. This is grey. Cool beans. Let's take grey out of those. Let's put... Let's take bright green out of those. We're getting a lot of bright green now. That hasn't sorted out these pairs, annoyingly. But we're getting a lot of colouring done now. Um, this is dark green and orange. Um, well, I've still got lots of thermos to look at as well. That's weird too. So maybe this one first. We've got, this is a weird puzzle actually. We've got a, a dark green in one of those two cells. We've got a yellow in one of those two. And we've got red in one of those two. Maybe that's, yeah, this row only needs two more and we know where bright blue goes. So that one is whatever's missing, which is dark blue. So one of those is dark blue blue. I can probably find... Oh no, because I don't know about the purple. Sorry, the grey and green thing. Hmm. What? I don't know. What other colours? Why were row 3 and 7 so good? Now this one, we've got that. That is kind of an out, outlier of 
cells that we've got if you look at the shapes like I think we've got this huge H apart from a few green bright green gray combos and one dark green orange they're all filled in so it's the other cells that are unusual but that's in the area so maybe that's more helpful than the others might be clutching at straws what are these two because that's quite interesting they can't be dark green red or yellow they can't be purple or bright green dark green red or yellow purple or bright green so they're from the blues and they can't be blue in this box though they can't be dark blue they're from bright blue gray and orange this one seems to be a naked single that is weird I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to check that out because it's too strange. It sees, yeah, this is one of the weirder naked singles I've ever seen. A colourful naked single, very difficult for me. It sees in the column, yellow, green, blue, ordinary green and blue, orange and grey. So there's still red, purple, bright green and bright blue. In the box it sees red, in the row it sees purple and it also sees bright green. So it is bright blue. So thank you, G, you did it. Now, one of these is bright blue. Uh, one of these two is bright blue. That's worth, no, now, bright blue's on this thermo. Oh, hang on. So it's at least three. Now here, doesn't that make a difference? If, th if that's three, yellow's four. I'm using the minima. Then red five, purple six, green seven. Oh, bright green also higher than red. Oh, we're getting very close now. I think there was only one degree of freedom there. But lots of colors that can't be here, including purple. Because from here we go bright blue, yellow, purple. And that's an ascending sequence. So purple can't be less than yellow. So that's not purple. That is, that is complicated. Um, now this column's looking good. We need to put in a bright green somewhere down here along with red. And therefore we've only got one color if I can work out what it is to go in down here. I can't work out what it is. It's, I still can't work out what it is. I'm a Muppet. It's purple. There we go. So one of those is purple. Now, hang on. This is an interesting combo. This bright blue and yellow, because they both see that cell. That one on the horizontal and that one on the thermo. So this can't be bright blue or yellow. Now, what's left for that? Red, gray, orange, purple and bright green. It can't be bright blue or yellow. So it is ordinary blue or ordinary green. And I can't tell which. That's so unfair. Right, I am marking that as a special cell that is probably very helpful and I can't quite see why at the moment. Bother. Um, maybe I do numbers now because I, I could see numbers better. Oh, I was, I was work okay, we've got two, no, we've got two digits, two colors to place here, gray and bright green. Well, bright green is high. We know that bright green is higher than red. We know that red is higher than yellow. We know that yellow is higher than bright blue. So bright green can't go on this thermo. It's got to go there. Bingo. That's blue. These are orange and what's the other color? I just said it. Gray. I didn't say it, but there it is. It's gray. That's not gray. Yeah, this is working now. Okay. Orange and grey, do we know the order of orange and grey? Grey hasn't been on a thermo before, so no, we don't. So we're going to find out whether it's higher or lower than orange there. Wow, is there... Okay, is every colour on a thermo now? Orange and grey there. Bright blue. Yellow, dark blue. Red, purple bright green and dark green right so now I'm going to suggest that bright blue is three because everything else is bigger yeah that's interest uh, I don't know 
Yes, that is either bright blue or yellow, so anything else on it is bigger. I don't know, let's keep colouring. That's probably the, the straightforward way of doing this, rather than monkeying around with, uh, with thermo numbers at this point. What about this box? We've got bright blue. We need a bright green somewhere. We need a dark blue in one of those two. We need a red and a bright green. Oh, I don't know. One of them will be in that row and one of them will be in that row based on this. I thought this was going to be helpful. Maybe just need to do a bit more. Oh, it's a fascinating puzzle. I, I mean, I do find this very entertaining. Oh, maybe this tiny little thermo is interesting. Because purple... It's quite big, isn't it? It's bigger than yellow and... Oh, no, but bright... Red. Red is smaller than purple. Yes, look. Red is smaller than purple. Purple is smaller than dark green. So that can't be bigger than whatever this is. That's not red. Gosh, this is a hard way of doing it in some ways. Red is one of those two. Bright green is one of those two. Th it doesn't tell us which way around those go. So maybe that didn't do anything else other than those two cells. That's quite irritating. So it's, we're down to this thermo. Maybe it's this cell. What does this see? It sees. Or, or, the trouble is it could be either of these. It could be whichever one is there. But we know bright blue is bigger than yellow. It can't be bright blue because then that would make yellow smaller. So this can't be bright blue. That's quite, oh, well, it obviously can't be bright blue. It's in its, oh, this has to be bright blue. It's just Sudoku. Ah, okay, that's annoying. Right, that is bright blue. Yellow has to be here. Yellow is not here, yellow is here. Now, what's this? This is the other one of those, bright blue, Sorry, ordinary blue or green? Do we know the relation between ordinary blue and green? We know... Yeah, we do. Ordinary blue is less than red. Red is less than purple. Purple is less than green. So ordinary blue is less than ordinary green. And there we go. This should finish the grid, I think. That can't be blue, so that can't be red, so that can't be purple, so that can't be bright green. That can't be bright green, so this can't be grey. This is the last of its type, or the last of its column. It's an eye wing. Eye wings are not so easy in colour as they are with numbers. So I have to work out again what's missing in this column. And I think it's grey. So that fixes grey there and orange there, which is actually the last relation between numbers. This is the last of its kind. That's red. This is now the last of its row. That is... Uh, bleh, blue, dark, no. Orange. Orange we haven't had, of course. Oh, and that's fixed orange and... Ooh, don't forget to do the Gs. Sorry, did forget one of them. One, two, three, four, five, and now there, actually. That's all the Gs in the grid. Now I can just finish off the colours. There we go, down the bottom, we've just got two cells to do at the top, which are fill-ins once I work out what's missing, red is missing, and dark blue. And there we go. This is the grid coloured, the full mosaic. Now we just have to turn it into numbers. I think we start here. If we go, well, let me fill in what I think is happening. We've got one there, two there, three. Now, if I'm right, that's three. I suspect yellow is four, which gives us two other yellows around the place. Four there. Now, that's branching as a sequence. Oh, we've also had orange there. But blue is less than red. So red isn't six. But there are three different colors higher than red. 
So red is 6. So I'm saying red is 6. Purple is 7 or 8. Dark green is 8 or 9. And bright ah, and dark green is less than bright green. So dark green is 8. Bright green is 9. Purple is 7. So I think this is working. Are any of these thermos wrong? Blue is going to have to be 5. That's all that's left for it. This dark green was 8. And this is 9. And I think that fills in all the thermos. And they're all accurate. And therefore we can just click on the, uh, the colours, can't we? And fill in all the numbers. And we're done. So I go from just putting in some numbers now. What is it? We've, we've done 43 minutes. Oops, so one there, twos uh, there, we've got threes, have to switch between the colour and the number modes as far as I understand this. Then we get fours which are yellow, fill them all in, we get fives which are blue, fill them all in, we get uh, sixes which are red and we fill them in we get sevens which are purple and we fill them in we get eights which are dark green fill them in and the remaining greens are nine and we fill them in oh I should have clicked on an empty color each time that was the way to do it there we go the solution is correct that is that is how to do one of these pure colouring puzzles. That was quite neat because there was a lot of these, I think, we needed to establish the relationships between some of the thermos to complete all of the colouring. So it was interplay between, it wasn't a full colour and then just do the thermos. It was colour and think about the relationships and then you can finish off the colouring and do the numbers. Fun and very pretty, very colourful. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon and bye for now.